It's day five, lesson five. Welcome to today's lesson. The undressed tens and units. I'm so happy to be here today. I haven't read some of the summary and notes that some of you wrote to me telling me what you have learned so far. I'm very happy to hear that you have learned one, one or two things. That's good. So, but before we start today's class, you will need to draw your second place value on another cardboard. You know, we, we have three cardboards, isn't it? So let's use another one now and just draw this. You can look at the one that you have done. You may have to pause this lesson and go and bring it and then draw it out as we have done. Post the lesson, draw this out, no labeling, just draw it out like this. And when you are done, you can play the lesson again and I'll be here waiting for you. Okay. Now, the hundred tens and units is very important in writing in words, right? Because every other place is named with them. And I want you to understand this very, very well. So let's go back to how numbers are formed starting, starting from the units. Okay, so we have the units. We start counting from what if we have zero unit? What well, zero means nothing, so there will be nothing to write, right? So because zero unit means zero unit. Okay, so let's say we now have zero. And then gradually this gets increased and then it becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine being the highest number that can be in a place because we can't have 10. We can't have 10. 10 is a two digit number. Don't forget. Only one digit can stay in a place at a time and beside we bundle up at every group of 10 because we count in tens. So now that we have nine, the next one, 10 is now we have one 10. So we have one 10 and zero units. One 10 and zero units, right? You can see now we have a 10 and then this keeps increasing. We have two tens, three, four, five six seven eight nine and then we instead of having ten tens now we move to the next bundle and that is one hundred so you can see how that works now this is one hundred because we have one hundred there is no tens and then there is no oh, units and these can go on also increasing from one to two to three to four till we get to nine. And that takes us to the next bundle that we'll talk about next class, right? So let's see some other examples because there is, it's not all the time that we have exactly 100, 200. There are so many other numbers that are in between. So for instance, between 10 and getting to 100 we have so many numbers let's see example what's so it we have 19 19 has a 10 and 9 units right we can move forward and have something like 45 45 has four tens right that's four bundle of tens and five units it's not up to the next 10 to make it 50. Uh, we can also have numbers like 88 so many between 10 and 100 we have so many numbers right and then this is 88 this is 88 and then eight tens and eight units till we get to 99 and then when we get to that point of having 99 right to move to 100 if we had one more to this nine let me add one more to it it becomes 10 and that time we carry that one ten to this one. Now we have one more ten. This is tens and unit. We have one more ten. This one becomes a bundle of ten, and that's why it becomes a hundred. So that's how all those numbers actually move from one place to another. Now, let's see how to write in expanded forms. 
and what all those numbers actually mean. Don't forget that we said that the place of a number tells us the value. The place of a digit rather tells us the value. So let's see a good example here. If we have numbers like 2, 5, 8. That's 258. Now we have this as unit, these as tens, and these as hundred. What this means is that we have two of hundreds, one hundred, and one hundred. That's two of them, two bundles of hundred. And by the time you look at this, it's put this together, hundred plus hundred gives us two hundred. And then we also have five tens, one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, and five tens. If you count and add all of these together, zero, five. Can you see? That's why three, five tens is 50. And then again, we have eight units, one in eight places, single units. And that, you see this, it is eight. And that is why when we write an expanded form, we can write this as 200. We say this is 200, right? Five tenths and eight units. You see that? We can also as well put a plus to write this in expanded form. This is 200 plus 50 plus eight. Let's confirm that, that 200 plus 50, okay, so my plus shouldn't be there, okay, then plus 8, I'm really taking my time, I don't want to rush, right, so this is 8, and this is 5, you can see 2, so that's what it means, 200 plus 5 times plus 8 is actually 258, let me show you another example, and that's how like I've always told you, if you've taken any of my other courses before, you have to learn to speak these things out to yourself in words, right? That's how to bring it to life. Now, let's see another example. If we have 709, okay, so this is unit, and this is tens, and this is hundred. This means that we have seven hundreds, hundreds in seven places, seven bundles of hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When we have all of them together, we have seven hundred. We have nothing in the tens place. We have no ten. So there's a seven hundred and an extra nine units, not up to a ten. To make it a 10 so we have nothing there and then we have nine units one two three four five six seven eight nine and so we see we have nine so we have seven hundred we have zero ten so forget that zero is a digit so you don't omit it because oh it's zero no and then this is nine units so we can as well put a plus sign here and then we can confirm to ourselves by doing this that 700 plus 0 tens, which is 0, 0, and then plus 9 is 709. Right? Or we just say 700 plus 9 is 709. And that brings me to this question. For instance, why is it that we cannot write 110? as one sorry one ten why can't we just write one ten as one since it's just one ten just like we write unit this should one ten as one would just mean units or you are writing one hundred and you just write it as one and that is why when there is nothing at the back of this where we don't have extra single uh units or anything at the back we put a zero so 110 is 1 and 0, and that is why numbers that are in the tens place are two digit numbers, right? They are two digit numbers, so they can either have a 0 at the back or a number, a digit rather, and then numbers in the 
hundred place in the hundred place usually example 100 is 100 they are three digits numbers can you see because even though it is 100 when there is nothing at the back we have a zero zero and that's how it increases right numbers in the units place are what example is one they are one digit number you can see how that increases why because we count in groups of 10 and that is why from unit to 10 10 is 10 times more than unit 100 is 10 times more than 10 right because we bundle them in group of 10 i'm going to show you that now with what you have on your board Yippee! Today's activity is going to be so interesting. So it's time to start painting. And then you need your place value house. So that's the one you've drawn at the beginning of the class. A ruler. You can still work with your hand anyway. A red and blue and yellow crayon or your color pencil. This is what we are going to be doing. So we have to represent everything we've been talking about now on our place value house. Okay, so. We we'll start from units, and I want to use the red for units, primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. So that's why I'm using that because remember I told you that the hundred things and units are the basics, right? So we need to get that very well. So let's start from the units, and then you can use your ruler to draw a line like this or use your hand, right? I want to use red. So I would write with my pencil and write U for units and then I'll paint that place telling me I'll paint it red so that I would know that this place is units. Right? I'm just going to shade around it. I'm just going to shade around it. So you can do that. You can do yours also. So this is the unit house. And it's red in color. Make sure it doesn't cover up the units. Paint neatly. I believe that yours will be neater than mine. I think I should just stop now. I think I should just stop now. Okay, so this is units. Now, this is the only place that we don't have things in bundle, right? So we are going to have how many here the highest we can have here in the is actually nine units right so we have just nine let's draw nine one two we can use this square three four five six seven eight nine you can go ahead and shade all of this if you want but i'm not going to shade mine you can shade it i'm sure it's going to look more beautiful i think you should i think you should actually yes so here we are i have my nine units and so when this becomes 10 we we'll bundle it up to the ten house let's make the ten house blue use your ruler to make sure that this is straight and so i'm going to use my pencil again to write t for tens while i shade this house as blue ten house as blue make sure that you also do not cover that half. Yes, so we have the blue for tents. Now let me ask you a question. This is the tents house. How many units makes one ten? How many units? How many in a bundle in a tents house? How many units do we have there? 
10 units makes one ten. Okay, good. So we know that we're going to have 10 units here. Now tell me, what color have we used for units? Red. So we are going to have 10 of these. 10 units makes a 10. Now, this is showing us the bundles, not how the other way we were bundling and saying, oh yes, we are moving into the next place. I just want you to see what each of these place contains. So one 10, in the 10 cells, we have 10 units. So let's go ahead and shade these like we did. Okay, so now that we have the 10 space, we have to move to the 100 space. So when we have 10 tens, it gives us 100, isn't it? 100. Let me write that with my pencil as H for 100, right? And then I'll paint that as yellow to let me know that the 100 house is yellow. We have yellow, so you can paint that round just like that. I'm getting faster. I think you should also. Now that we have the hundred place, how many? What makes up the hundred place? How many tens makes a hundred? Ten of tens. Now, am I going to have red air? No, because this has ten tens. And we said the tens house is actually blue, isn't it? So we are going to have ten of blue to show us that one hundred has ten of tens. Can you see ten of tens? Is this not more than yes? So now it's time to shade. Yes, so we did it. Now, let's go over this and explain again. This is the units place, right? Let's call it the red house, right? And then because units are not in bundles, right? The highest that we can have here is nine. And then the moment we have a 10, it gives us a bundle of 10, which means that one 10 has 10 units. That's why it's also red. And then when we have 10 tens, it gives us a bundle of 100. And this shows that a hundred has ten of tens. Isn't that amazing? Yes. So you can finish up your painting and then keep it because we're going to continue tomorrow when we meet the thousands. All right. So let's see what we have learned so far today. We use hundred tens and units in naming numbers. We'll learn about that soon. And then ten units makes one ten. And then 10 tens makes 100. I must tell you that you are doing a very good job, right? I would like to see the pictures of what you've painted so far, right? You can send them to me through my emails, respond to them emails, and I'll be happy to say it. See you next time. Bye-bye.